So here's the cable bracket. Super simple. 3 8 bolt, spacer, a couple dog legs, whatever material you got, really don't matter. Should be able to pivot down in there. It occurred to me when I put this in on the last video on the rear control, there's probably some people that don't know how to do this trick. So I'm going to show you this real quick. For working with cable, this is called a farmer's eye. Take a piece of standard 7x7 aircraft grade cable, separate it into two pieces. You're going to have the core of the cable on one side and three outside strands on the other. Take and wind that guy back a ways. And these cables, because of the way that they're made, they only want to go together one way. You can see, it does not lay together very nicely. So, let's go the opposite direction. See how it pulls together? And it lays in its natural form. Now you can take these wrap them back in a lot easier to see on big cable that's a really basic farmer's eye that one's actually really sloppy you can see the ends started peeling away if you keep those twisted up tight as you do it you can make a really nice tight loop and if you have um, some extra cable on the end you can braid those together and that farmer's eye will be just as strong as the regular portion of the cable. So I'm going to unwind this real quick. We're going to put it on this guy before we mount it on the frame. So there we go. There's a farmer's eye located on there. Good and strong. I'm probably going to trim this tail off just because, like I said, it got a little bit ratty out here on the end. A lot of times I'll just lay it back on and electrical tape around it. You can put some cable clamps on it. See a lot of guys do that on like larger main line. Now I know this as a logging thing, but uh, being that it's called a farmer's eye, I'm sure there's some other applications. And just about anything you're doing with seven by seven strand cable, you can put this in there. Pretty easy to do. So I want that handle to be right about there. Oh, forgot to clean my truck out after the last time I was shooting. Anyways. Oh, and there's the spring that fell out of the wonderful Dodge door hinge. You know it's a redneck truck. There's crap on the floor everywhere. I want that handle. Get out of the way. Right about lined up with that one. About there. Now, uh, you can drill that in. Or, instead of fighting the carpet and the insulation, binding up on your drill bit. Make it easy on yourself. Sharp center punch. Set her in the hole where you want it. Whack it with a hammer. You'll drive that sucker right through the sheet metal. And by doing that, because you're not drilling the material out, you're not using a self-tapper that's drilling the material out, you're not fighting the insulation and the carpet getting all bunged up on your drill bit, that will take the material that's there and displace it. And what I mean by that, I'll go underneath and show you. So right here is where the cable comes through. You can see that lip. That's the material that we displaced by using the punch. That gives your screws something to really bite into versus just being, you know, some 18 gauge sheet metal floor. You over tighten the screw and she strips out and then, yeah, lots of stupidness. And after a couple minutes of screwing around, that's what you get. We'll go back here, make sure the valve is fully open. You guys can't see it, I can. See how she's hooked on there, just right around the shaft. Now I can braid these two tails together. You can always unbraid it and change the length if you need to. I actually had to do it twice on this one and tighten this loop up a little bit. Because these levers cam over, um, they've got to have just the right amount of tension that they stay down. And with the spring tension of the valve, it doesn't try to pop up. I want it to just sit there on the floor. This one's actually still a little bit light, but I'm gonna leave it locked down for the drive home and that'll stretch the cable and kind of put a little bit of a crink right in there and they'll be good to go. Going through my list of things that are left, one of the top things I still have, I need to set up my vacuum gauges. So here I've got the same size gauge, it's the incorrect one, but we can use this as a template. 
Now, I like setting my trucks up where it's more or less the interior is like a cockpit to the driver, almost like a plane. All your controls wrap around you. We already got the gauge cluster right in front of us. We've got our hopper and uh, crossover temp and our, um, wow, brain fart. Airflow meter, dealy bop that reads the O2 sensor over here. So now I want some gauges over here and those ones are gonna be vacuum gauges. Now, because I never throw anything away, Here's a parted out, scrapped out piece of junk snowmobile with an aluminum tunnel. I'm gonna use a piece of that aluminum. Now I've already used a 55 gallon drum lid and made a template of how I want this thing to sit. This will sit behind the gauge cluster shroud. It's gonna utilize two of the screws that are in the dash to mount it in place. This cutout is to go over the top of a little heater vent dealy. This will sit over the top of the dash and bolt the gauges right here. But this is some very flimsy material. I want something a little bit more substantial. So here's a piece of that snowmobile tunnel that I cut out. Now we're gonna bend this up to match that. And then I'm gonna put the correct size holes in it because I drilled those ones too big, but that was just for mock-up, so it's fine. So I'm gonna get this bent up, my homemade little bender, and we'll get this. <laughs> size line you want to run um, I'm using quarter inch this time around I use 3 8 on my other truck um, this line can get really expensive until you find out you can get on Amazon and buy a full kit with all the stuff in it for like 13 bucks occasionally Amazon's get a good deal so we're just gonna come in here I want to be right close to the temperature sender here and the reason I want that is so that when this line comes out I can zip tie these together and it'll kind of support each other. I also want it kind of out of the view of the main queue public. Mint. Now, all the fittings that this thing comes with, they're all plastic, which is fine, but the hopper will have a tendency to get to a little bit hot so here wherever I put it somewhere in this box oh maybe I left it over on the bench nope here it is here I'm gonna use a solid metal quick connect fitting same thing as on the temperature sensor I just took a brass nut re-threaded it to whatever I need this time around it's a eighth inch MPT There we go. Tighten them guys together. <clears throat> There's that fitting. Now we'll go do the one underneath on the cooling rails. And once I have the gauges mounted, it'll be no big deal. Plug that in, pull the line down, go get up to the gauge. Now, in the interest of keeping this guy short, 
I ain't giving this stuff away. Also protected, so nothing happens to it and we don't have to buy more of it later. And completely hidden and out of sight. We could have put our rails vacuum in the center post or in a cooling rail like I did on my other truck or in the corner post and sent the line off that way, but then I had to pull rails off and move the hay filter. And that sounds like a whole bunch of messing around. But when you stick her down under the bed, nobody knows it's there. Now it is a little bit crooked because the drill didn't fit underneath the board. But we're just not gonna worry about that. It's, it's totally fine. It's safe, it's protected. It'll be a nice short run down underneath the frame straightforward now I had this big elaborate plan I was gonna take and make these little clips that came off here and came forward and it was gonna pin the gauge in place when I screwed this guy down I didn't need to I ground these holes so tight you couldn't turn that gauge if you put vice grips on it so I'll leave it as it is uh, if I can't move in my hand I don't think it's gonna be moving around in the truck now these fittings did come with the kit. These ones did not. This was Home Depot special. Holy crap, it's like they didn't even try and spit on it. $11 a piece for a one inch piece of brass. If I didn't want it to look nice from the outside, because you will be able to see the back of the gauge cluster, um, I would have just built these out of steel and dealt with the look. But we'll get a little pipe dope on there. Oh, and the threads in them are even garbage, too. Go figure. It's Home Depot. Everything consumer grade anymore is just junk. Try and build a nice truck. And try and buy the nice, right materials. And you make it look good. And now nah, it's, it's, it's still junky. Like, I can feel the threads are chunky. That's no good. But it's what it is. It's probably the only time I'll ever have to touch these things. Now I did not put inline filters in these, um, where on my last truck I did, and Wayne puts them in all of his trucks. Uh, my idea is because they're quick disconnect, if anything plugs up, I should just be able to stick an air hose to it and blow it out. Worst comes to worst, I gotta pull the fitting apart and. Clean it out. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Now I got some 90 degree fittings, some short chunks of line. Plug them in there. Now this line is pretty flexible and it's supposed to be abrasion resistant. So I'm going to hope that I can just take both these lines down through one hole in the dashboard. So that's ready to go get mounted. Yeah. Doesn't look that bad. Doesn't look that good, but it doesn't look that bad. Those gauges there, those ones there, of course all the stock ones. Nice, rounded, cockpit look. How does it look from the outside? I haven't ran the lines yet. Okay, that looks a little hokey, but uh, yeah, I'm okay with it. Maybe later I'll make a little plastic shroud that can go over the top of it and cover that up and it'll just look like a little lump on the dashboard. So she's a bit of a monsoon outside and uh, I don't really feel like bringing the Dodge in here. It's all soaking wet and dripping all over me while I'm crawling around underneath it running these vacuum lines. We'll save that for tomorrow. Instead, I finally found some containers. These are what we're gonna use for the hopper lid and for the hay filter. These are three and a half gallon gasketed lids, lever lock, quick and easy access. So I got three of these from a company called Uline and it was 88 bucks for all three lids, rings, bucket, the whole nine. I've already got the first one chopped up and onto the hopper lid. I did fully weld this with that infuriating little machine and so I've got her all fully welded up. Didn't bother to water test because I went right back over it and gave it a skiff coat of uh, silicone to make sure that we don't have any leaks. I also welded it on the inside. Yeah, it's ugly. 
These are uh, 24 gauge, not fun to weld, even with 023 wire. But, so we got the silicone on her, and this says do a, uh, wherever it says on the directions, this tells you within five minutes you gotta assemble parts. That means within five minutes, you gotta paint, right? Spray tag. 55 gallon drum lids, for whatever reason, they sit really nicely on a brute garbage can. And I did totally go against my own rule. I did not have this clamped down while I welded this. But with running minimal amperage, I have my hand sitting here the entire time. I couldn't even get this entire barrel lid warm. So I'm not worried about any distortion on the big lid, but of course I did have the little one clamped down, 24 gauge. You look at it wrong and it'll warp. But the extra nice thing about having a shop garbage can, it's got wheels on it. It's basically like having your own Lazy Susan for painting. And really the reason that I'm painting over this so quickly, not bothering to wait for the silicone to set, is because I don't have any other lids right now, and because it's pouring rain, I want to have a lid on my truck when I head home. Otherwise I'll end up filling the gas fire full of water while it's driving and once I get home. And I really don't think the paint going over the top of uh, silicone has been sitting for about five minutes and has some skin on it. I think it'll be fine. So I'm going to finish getting this painted up and maybe I'll play with the vacuum lines after this. but. Uh, and it's pretty darn wet outside, and the truck's going to leave a lake on the shop floor. But I think that's where I'm going to end this video. Tomorrow, hopefully the weather is better. If not, I'll have to bring the truck in uh, in the morning and let it dry out during the day so that I can get the vacuum lines done. And then we'll be moving up underneath the hood. Talk to you guys later.